Morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Um, very special day for me today. It's my daughter's birthday. Uh, my daughter's 24 today, Ayana. So, um, happy birthday, Ayana. And I remember the day actually, it was a Thursday. I remember rushing from Ealing. I was watching a hockey match and uh, rushing to the hospital uh, to see it all. <laughs> And so, may God bless her today, and I look forward to spending some time with her later. Um, today's been an incredible day. Thank you for all your ministries, all the people here, uh, all the work you put in. Thank you for a wonderful <laughs> children's story. Um, I pray we'll, um, I pray we'll take heed, really. I'm, you know, with me, every time I come here, I go away, and I have one objective. Yeah? I say to myself, there must be something, one thing at least, that changes in my life. And um, I hope today is the same for you. And the reason for the children's story um, about health today is because when we look at the story of Elijah, I believe he was a health reformer. And I also believe the reason why he was so powerful and devoted to God was because he adhered to God's health message at his time. Um, so let's pray before we... Um, we we'll look at the, the passage and um, thank, you. thank you. It is so sweet, Lord, to trust in Jesus. And just to take you at your word, Lord. We we pray today, Lord, we will learn what it means to live according to your word. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to join us here, or remain with us, but join us in a, a greater measure. Father, this is not a sermon, but you speak messages to us, Lord, and we want you to speak to our hearts. I'm praying, Lord, and asking that each one here today hears from you. I pray, Lord, you speak to us individually. I pray, Lord, we collectively support each other. Reach out to you, Lord, and experience your power and your glory. So, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask him to lead and to guide us. And I thank you for all the people who have helped today and encouraged and allow you to use them. And I pray you continue to do so. We thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I went to school in East London, um, a place called Plasto, and uh, the time, the time I went to school is quite violent. It's not much different to now, okay? So all these things you're seeing in the media is not new. And for me to get to school sometimes, I had to run over the sewers. If you know what sewers are, it's difficult to explain. I had to run across the sewers, maybe for 500 yards, go across the cemetery, across some fields, to get past some skinheads so I can get to school. <laughs> and I used to love it because um, I did athletics at the time and that adrenaline in rush was always good practice. Um, I happened to be probably the fastest runner in my school uh, at the time, um, but I knew if I slipped, that was it. And um, around sixth form, we set up a Christian society in my school called it Logo. And, um, and that was quite powerful as well, because what we tried to do is to bring people together, yeah, through the gospel. And I remember uh, when I was in the sixth form, I was doing French A-level. I missed so much French because my mum was ill that I used to have a one-to-one -one with my teacher, Mr. Quick. And Mr. Quick was my French teacher, fantastic, uh, lovely man, always funny, always telling jokes. And, one day after school, I went to see him, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Quick, <laughs> I was heading for the classroom, yeah, he's headed to his office, and he said, look, I want to show you something, and he's opened the cupboard, and there's all these books, alright, so Mr. Quick, this, this funny man that people thought was weird, all, all of a sudden, I'm seeing Bibles, yeah, books to do with the Bible, and he said, I'm really impressed with what you guys have been doing in the school. I 
he pulled out the Bible and he said to me, I used to be a Jesuit priest. Okay? I used to be a Jesuit priest. And he explained to me what happened to him. Okay? Uh, Nathan, can you read the scripture for me? <coughs> and he quoted this scripture that Nathan's about to read. From 1 John uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, it says, That which was born from the beginning, which we have heard. John, John 1. Sorry. I think I read it down wrong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <coughs> My fault. scripture to me and he says as long as you live remember this the word is powerful he said life is given through a word and he said wars are started by one word it's either yes we go to war or no we don't go to war and he spoke about the power of the word of God he explained to me what happened to him as a Jesuit priest as he studied the Bible for himself to get to know Jesus, it was so difficult for him to leave that it caused him a nervous breakdown. And that's why it still affected him. But he said it was worth the price of leaving, being a Jesuit, to become a Christian. Um, it's probably, you see with Brexit, <laughs> it's very hard to leave a gang, isn't it? Yeah? It's very hard to leave an association uh, at times and he and I always remember this um, in talking to Mr. Quick and I was so amazed we see people but we don't know where they've been I see you I don't know your background I don't know what you're going through and this man who was a figure of fun became an inspirational person to me uh, because of his testimony I asked God because I'm not a preacher I, I don't like this preaching business, um, sometimes I think it misses the mark. I said to God, what is the message for Salisbury Church today? What is the message? Elijah had a message, he delivered it to the king. I said, what is the message for Salisbury Church? And he said to me, and you know, he says, I want them to pray as a church today. We need to pray more together as a church. So, somewhere along the line, very soon, we're going to do some praying. And the Lord touched my heart to say, he's speaking to people, and people have things they want praying about, and he wants to speak to people more this morning. So my message today is, God wants us to pray this morning. Um, my objectives uh, today... I hope when we leave here today, we yearn, yearn for Jesus Christ, the water of life. Commit to pray devotedly for children. I want to focus a little bit about children today uh, as we go on. And to recommit our whole lives to Jesus. Uh, I've heard people say this morning how we need to really come in tune with God in his work, etc. And I think it's important to really keep Jesus Christ as the, the focus of whatever we do. So I want to take us back to 1 Kings 17, and just to read, I'm not going to go through all, all the chapter, all the sorry verses, I'm just going to pick up a few points in there. And I'm going to read it from, I think this is the, it's not the King James Version, so I'll read this. Um, and Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these days except at my word. Imagine that. A man comes from nowhere, goes to a man of authority, goes to a king, 
And he says to him, there will be no rain or dew until I say so. Imagine that. Yeah. Have you sought to think of the audacity <laughs> of that? Can you imagine? Yeah. And, you know, a prophet of God. And how do you get to, to be somebody like that? How do you get to be so confident that you can go to a king and not just, you know, and be so specific and say to him, there won't be no rain, nor dew till I say so. And what was so significant about Elijah saying that to Ahab? What was so significant? Yeah? Was it just for show? And brethren, I want to say something to us. Sometimes when we pray, and sometimes the things we want to do, we have to ask ourselves, is it in accordance with the word of God? Is it about God's glory? Or is it about my glory? And lately, that's been my, my thought. I'm asking God, I'm praying, and is it about you or is it about me? And I'm asking you to reflect on that. Your life, your prayers, what you do, is it in accordance with God? For his glory, what he wants, or is it about you or me? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And I don't go too much into what happened to Israel, um, but I'm just going to read from Scripture. I'll let the Scripture speak this morning um, about Ahab. I'll let the Scripture speak, okay? So if we go back to 1 Kings, if we look at 1 Kings 16, I'll read it from here, from verse 30. Um, we get a, a bit of the background um, to this. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. So he was the original bad man, as we'd say, yeah, in terms of a king. He was, he, was, he was the worst of the worst. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took his wife, Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbal, the king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. So here, here's a man who's supposed to be representing God as the king of Israel, yeah? Marries someone from totally the other side, the Baal worshippers, who also thought they controlled the sun, they controlled uh, the weather, thunderstorms and, and rain and dew. He went totally on the other side, to worship against God, okay? Dragging along a lot of the people of God. And then the Bible says, verse 32, then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So he's really gone on the other side. He's even building an altar to worship a false God. Now how many altars are we building for serving a wrong God? I ask, I. It's probably, you see, the old churches and they're becoming more rare. But you see more modern churches, a lot more modern churches than the old ones. But the big rise to reconstruct them, it will take a while. Yeah. The old ones, back to the youth again. Yes, definitely. And, and thanks for your point. And um, we, we don't think about what they're actually doing, yeah? We see nice things coming up, nice architecture, but we, we don't question what's behind it. And also in ourselves, in our homes, in our lives, we're all building altars, figuratively speaking or not, you know? The things we bring into our homes, uh, the things we expose our children to. And this is why we, we have so much problems today. I'll, I'll touch on this a bit more. And, and it goes on to say, and I have made a wooden image and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God in Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel were before him. All right? So he's actually going out to provoke God. Okay? He's gone out against God. And brethren, we, we have to learn from, we have to learn from, from, from Ahab and what's happened there. I don't think it's any different uh, today. I look at my own life and I, I say to myself, how am I building um, altars of Baal? Yeah? What is it in my life that's similar to people then? They have physical, you know, wooden structures and etc. But what, what are the subtle things that are no different 
today <coughs> than it was in his time. Okay, just one minute. I'll just thank you. Um, there's one thing I want to I want to touch on that that went on in uh, Ahab's time, and that was child sacrifice. Okay, children sacrifice. They call it foundation sacrifice. Sacrificing children to Baal, um, putting them in foundations of buildings, and other, all, all other forms of sacrifice where children were used. That was quite a regular, a regular thing. And I believe today, the same thing is happening. It's been going on for years. We are sacrificing our children from the time they're born by the things we expose them to. Um, we, we, you know, I talked to Vernon, Bernard this, this morning. Um, and we were talking about how the devil tries to recruit children from the time they're young for his army. Yeah? And he'll only want that so they can oppose the people of God. They are our own children are out there and sometimes we're, we're not even bothering about them. We're not looking for them. We're not praying for them. Okay? Last week, I spoke to a young man and... I spoke to a young man and he was, this, he, was this, he was telling me what's going on for him. He's 16 and he's explaining to me how children are being sacrificed in this day. He was explaining to me how young children are having children and how difficult it is uh, to break the cycle of addiction. And he was talking from his own experience. He was 16 explaining that to me. You know, I, 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 work, I work in an environment, I've worked with children for so long, and I'm telling you, more and more, more and more, more and more, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm horrified by what I hear, what I see. It, back in 1991, I think it was 1992, I remember working a pro project in, in Bermondsey, and we were talking about four-year-olds coming to school with knives. That was then, okay? Four-year-olds, five-year-olds are doing drug dealing in primary schools. <coughs> that young. Parents were encouraging it. They were that young. That was back then. Now it's common. Yeah, it's, 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 it do doesn't raise an eyebrow anymore. All right? The devil is rampant with children. And, brethren, we can make a difference. It's the prayers of, of the people of God that can make a difference. Because all these things are... They can have all the projects, all the money, all right? But all these things are quite demonic in terms of how they're happening. There are lots of demons getting involved in getting these children from such a young age that it becomes very difficult for them to come out of it. I remember with a young guy who was 16, he tried to leave the gang, all right? A notorious gang. And a, no one knew at the college that he was a high risk. He was high risk because he had fire, he used fire on his guns, okay? Now, I just talked to him one to one, once a week. I said to him, how old were you when you joined this gang? I won't mention the name of the gang. He said, I was free. I was initiated in this gang when I was three years old. Yeah? He's trying to leave. As he's trying to leave, they put contracts on him to kill him. He's had to change his identity. He's moved somewhere else in the country. It is so difficult. And I've just given this sort of extreme sort of example, but that's some people's reality. Okay? That is some people's reality. And I think, in the church, we need to wake up and really kind of not take the media stance in these things, but realize, you know what, we have a role to play. Yeah? There's a lot of praying to do. Do you know what's above you right there? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah? I worked there for three years. I didn't know about this church. <laughs> I spoke to lots of young people up there who have similar stories to what I'm telling you. All right? They're at risk young people. I said, the youth counselling up there. I didn't, know, I didn't know which church was there. It's just weird figures in it for three years. And, you know, if you hear their stories, yeah, they make you want to cry sometimes as to what they've been through. So, so Elijah, um, and I think back in those days, things were just as bad in terms of what happened to children. Okay? I think it's just as bad. So Elijah going and giving that message to the king, it wasn't a, a show off kind of thing. It was a message from God because God had had enough and God wanted to stop the rot. Okay? 
Now, I know people will say during those three years or so of famine that lots of people died and lots of children uh, starved, etc. And, and that may be the case. But God had to do this through Elijah in order to save Israel, in order to make a statement, in order for us to learn from this as well. And I ask myself, how does Elijah become such a you know, so powerful and clear-cut man of God? How, how does he, you know, what, people, you know, we hear Elijah, but how, how did he get to be like this? Yeah, Shirley, when you go, Shirley's going to read from us from Prophets and King. provided for Elijah during that time and told him where to go, right. where he would drink water. God had provided for him. And the ravens, unclean birds, <laughs> you know, <laughs> were bringing food for him. So God had, God had made provision for him um, during that time. But he's a guy that followed what God said. God didn't give him all the vision in one go. Did one bit and then God revealed the next step. Sometimes when God speaks to you, not all the time, we need to move what God's shown us. He's not going to give us everything before we move forward. Yeah? We got to step. Jesus didn't know everything that was going to happen to him from, from when he was born. As he grew up, things became revealed to him step by step. And God is so wonderful. And I love, I love the two things. I love the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Uh, Jesus, you know, Jesus himself, in his ministry, he says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. All right? Jesus was kind of homeless during that time. Do you realize that? <laughs> it's homeless, yeah? And, you know, it's wonderful. And Jesus is the water of life. He is the water of life. And I'm going to stop here, um, just, just for a moment. Um, and I want, I want to invite us uh, to have some time for reflection. Let's have some time for reflection. I, I want to ask, how are things? How are things with you and the Lord? How are things with me and the Lord? How are things inside? Yeah. What's, what's, what's going on inside? If Elijah walked in there, would I feel comfortable with what he had to say? If Jesus walked in, would I feel comfortable around Jesus or uncomfortable? We all wear masks, all of us. Sometimes two, sometimes three of them. One for each occasion. But how is it with you and Jesus? And How is it with your children, your nieces, your nephews? <coughs> when last have we reached out, even in our own family, in love? How, when's the last time we took time just to pray for our children? Our 
nieces, our nephews, our cousins. When's the last time maybe we pray for the children down the road? We see some misbehaving children, or a little time, and say, Lord, let me pray. Do, 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 do you see where I'm coming at? Because I think when we start to, 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 to think about your Elijah's and your John the Baptist and your Jesus's especially, they just had time to be thinking and praying for people. Yeah. But if we're consumed with just thinking about ourselves and our problems, just that, we're missing the point. <laughs> I remember when I was homeless for three weeks. I won't call it homeless because I was okay. I, I could sleep in the in the top of the tower, but you know, I had, I wasn't, it wasn't that bad. But I remember praying to God, and I started to pray and ask God for a place, and I stopped. That was in Wolfram. So I remember what, exactly where I was. I was 19 years of it, and I stopped. I said, God, forgive me. My prayer is selfish. Let me start again. And because I thought the the people far worse than me, and I was doing okay. And I believe that time that was the Holy Spirit. It took another year before I got somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, and sometimes we put our needs before the needs of others. Yeah. I believe the blessing and the power comes when we are praying selflessly. We're not putting ourselves first. So I want to, um, I want to invite us to, I know some of us don't know each other. I want us to have a, it's a little short time. Um, I don't know how we'll do this, but maybe find somebody in here and, and maybe just exchange what prayers you would like for each other. If you don't pray verbally, just say you can pray in your mind. Okay? Yeah? Just, just, just for a moment. And, and also, after that, I want us to have a few prayers for our children that are here in this church and for children in Salisbury, in the cities, what's going on. Children that's been sacrificed, children that right now are crying out for help, who are being abused, crying out for, for Christians to pray for them. Okay? What shall we do first? Do you want us to sit down in little groups? I don't know. So tell, tell me what you think. Tell me how you feel. Maybe something we're familiar with, that when we do our praying in the morning, uh, we, we go into about threes or fours and, oh. we, and we'll just pray together. How is that yeah. with everyone else? You don't have to if you don't want to, but this is the invitation as part of the sermon. Is that, does that sound like a... Would you want to repeat that, Ian? Yeah, you just two, threes, fours or fives. Okay. Whatever group is here, you just sit right here. Turn the chairs around and we can... Is that okay? Yeah. So and, and have, a, have a short discussion about yourself. And okay. I said, those who can pray, we'll keep it short. And then after that, I want us to, I, I want to focus, let's, look, let's focus our prayers as well. Yeah, as well. And after that, we're going to pray for children. We'll start with the children who are here. And then, and, you know, we'll think about other children. And I think it's the, the power of God. It's the blessing of Jesus. And this is the gospel. All right. This is what we have to bring to people, the love of Christ, the power of God, prayer. We have to bring that ministry into the lives of people, because that's what's going to break the shackles. Okay? Believe me, trust me, um, it wasn't, there's certain things I don't want to say on there because it's recorded, but I, I've, just recently I've been in a situation where children under the influence have almost tried to kill their parents without meaning it. And I've seen the power of prayer in the, of, over four days and how that's turned things around. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I've seen that. It could have been so different. It could have been so different. So I know God delivers, but we have to make ourselves available for God. Okay, so Ian, as you said, if we can just break in groups, I'll come and join and those who can pray, but brethren, let's use that tool for prayer. Let's call on God now. All right? Sister, I heard you mention this morning, prayer for, yeah? And um, I'll tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. The young people I work with, especially over the last 20, 30 years, 
Do you know what the main <coughs> problem, overriding problem with them is? No, that's mm. issues with fathers. Yeah. Do you understand? Hard. It's hard. It's hard on them. And um, we need to be praying for the fatherless. Jesus tells us that. We, we told this in the scriptures. Don't blame the fathers. We don't know what they've gone through, what cycle they've gone through. We need to be praying for understanding. Okay? And I could, you know, it, it's just fascinating. I've seen young guys 16 and start talking, they cry their eyes out. They say, oh, I wish I could talk to my dad like you, just have a, a general conversation. And then when I spoke to him, he said to me, I saw my dad. He just spoke weed while I watched telly and I was smoking weed. He said, no conversation. Do you understand? Yeah. I blame the dad. He, he's probably gone through the same thing. He doesn't know. It's not about blaming. It's about praying. Do you understand? Yeah? So guys, look, we have a saviour. Yeah? Jesus didn't just die for us. He died for everyone. We have a saviour, man. And he will save our children. You know? He will save this, those young people. Yeah. We need to be like Elijah's. And not there. Okay, so... Right, let's split up and then um,
just our own children here, Father, but um, in our society around us, we should be praying for our nation. Uh, we should be active and we should be, we should be um, proactive and active. Protesting, we should be protesting different. We need a voice. I ask you, Father, you would give us. In filling the Holy Spirit to come back in boldly, so that we can we can have a voice on behalf of the truth, dear Father. We can represent you on this earth. Help us to represent you on this earth, dear Father. We want to make a difference in sort of
to see the basic right and wrong in doing all the selfish things that are going on in this world. Help them to see that, that they are selfish and we are deceived. Dear Father, give them that natural insight. And we ask you, dear Father, to share that with us. Father, show us how to express it to people in Jesus' name. Amen. sort of finish off now. Um, thank you. Before I do that, I want to re read a psalm. 
Um, the prayers will be for however God directs you, but I want us to really think about children. children. I hope I hope we go away from there just thinking and praying, committing somebody to our hearts that we will fight for spiritually and in prayer for God to save and deliver. Okay. Um, prayer, prayer. You know, one time I'd left church for 10 years, I got discouraged. And for 10 years, I didn't read my Bible. 10 years. I went at war with God, which is the losing battle. He could take me out of the church, but he couldn't take God out of my head for 10 years. And I remember when uh, I kind of came to my senses. <laughs> And I went to walk so Seventh Adventist Church. And Sister Williams said to me, So nice to see you, Brother Leroy. I want you to meet the four sisters who've been praying for you over the last ten years. There were four of them. They formed a group and they just prayed for me every week. And I saw these sisters and I, I was just I was just so amazed. You know what I'm saying? The power of prayer. And I was so amazed. I didn't even know they were praying for me. Um, let us take comfort in the word of God. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Have no fear, for God is with us. And um, let us, let us, uh, let us, uh, up. Just take two prayers, um, short prayers if we can, and then I'll conclude with a prayer, for, for, uh, especially for our children in here, and then um, we'll take the closing hymn and I'll do a benediction. So, can we, um, shall we kneel? Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Take two, then I'll say the final one. Okay. Dear Father, we praise your glorious name. We thank you for this inspiration to pray, because we know, dear Father, deep down inside that we should be prayer warriors. Amen. We want to become prayer warriors. Dear Father, I pray that you will open us up to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in order to pray more yes, and Lord. to pray for our children more. And we ask you, Father, that you will inspire our children as well, to discern good from evil as well. We, are, we need that too, but we want to, we, we just pray you, Father, that you will involve us more and make a difference in this in Salisbury and around our church, dear Father. Help us to discern opportunities that can come up, Father. Especially now that we're going to be praying uh, to tomorrow evening and we're having a prayer prayer session next weekend in the evening, in the, in the night. And I ask your Father that you will send us the Holy Spirit in order to know what to pray for, yes. so we can become those prayer warriors. I must admit we don't know the first thing about praying for us I ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, we are so thankful to you, Lord. Thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for each heart that's bowed before you. I thank you for each prayer that's gone to heaven. I thank you for answering the prayers, Lord. We ask for you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to bless our children, other people's children. We pray you put a burden on our hearts to pray for others more than we pray for ourselves. And we ask you, Lord, for the rest of this day that we be mindful of you and the power of prayer. We thank you so much, Lord, for Jesus Christ and his message. Amen. Amen.
stand and sing the closing hymn, Baptizes and You.